Good day everyone. The topic to be discussed in this video is about Ethernet. Let us define some words that we will be using on this topic. First, carrier sets. When a device connected to an Ethernet network wants to send data, it first checks to make sure it has a carrier on which to send its data, usually a piece of copper cable connected to a hub or another machine. Second, multiple access means that all machines on the network are free to use the network whenever they like as long as no one else is transmitting. Third, collision detection, a means of ensuring that when two machines start to transmit data simultaneously, that the resultant corrupted data is discarded or retransmissions are generated at differing time. Fourth, switch. Connect network segments providing full duplex communication, valuable network performance data, and efficient use of network bandwidth. Let us now discuss what Ethernet is. Ethernet was developed in the late 1970s by the Xerox Corporation at their Palo Alto Research Center in California. It has been estimated that over 70% of the world's network use the internet or the ethernet protocol. Ethernet is a technology that connects wired local area networks or LAN and enables the device to communicate with each other through a protocol, which is the common network language. Ethernet uses a protocol called CSMA CD. This stands for Carrier Sense Multiple Access with Collision Detection, as defined earlier. There are two types of Ethernet network the Fast Ethernet and the gigabit ethernet. Let us first define fast ethernet. So fast ethernet, this is a type of ethernet network that can transmit data at a rate of 100 Mbps or megabits per second through a twisted pair cable or a fiber optic cable. The data can be transformed from 10 Mbps to 100 Mbps with no protocol translation or changes in the application and network software. Next is the Gigabit Ethernet. This is a type of Ethernet network that has the capability to transfer data at a rate of 1000 Mbps based on a twisted pair cable or a fiber optic cable. Among other types of Ethernet cable, this is the most popular one. Here is an animation of how Ethernet works. This is a basic Ethernet bus. This is a coax-based Ethernet network where all machines are daisy-chained using RG58 coax cable or sometimes referred to as thin Ethernet or thin net. This type of network is no longer used but understanding how thin Ethernet works explains the very basic of Ethernet operation. So... What happens in this illustration? Let me explain. Machine 2 wants to send a message to machine 4. But first, it listens to make sure no one else is using the network. If it is all clear, it starts to transmit its data 
on the network represented by the yellow flashing screen which packets or each packet of data contains the destination address the sender address and of course the data to be transmitted the signal moves down the cable and is received by every machine on the network but because it is only addressed to number 4 the other machines ignores it machine 4 then sends a message back to number 2 acknowledging receipt of the data represented by the purple flashing screens but what happens when two machines try to transmit at the same time a collision occurs and each machine has to back off for a random period of time before retrying here is another example this time using a switch switch ethernet is a piece of network equipment that is required for multiple network devices in a LAN or a local area network in using this type of cable a regular network cable shall be used instead of a crossover uh, cable this ethernet cable forwards the data from one device to another device with the same network normally this supports different data transfer rates ethernet is widely used as a network technology due to the fact that the cost of such a network is not too high now let me explain how uh, this diagram works to overcome the problem of collision and other effects on network speed we now use switches with a switch machines can transmit simultaneously in this case 1 and 5 first and then 2 and 4 as you can see the switch reads the destination addresses and switches the signals directly to the recipient without broadcasting to all of the machines on the network this point-to-point -point switching elevates the problems associated with collision and considerably improves in the real world however one or more of these machines will be servers and as most network traffic is between the clients and a server a serious bottleneck can occur the answer to this problem is to make server connections faster than the clients the normal solution is to have the client machines on 100 mbps ports and the servers on 1000 mbps ports or gigabit ethernet then 10 to 1 ratio is usually adequate because not all of the clients will need to access the server at the same time let us now discuss ethernet issues and solutions now some of the people may lose some mobility if they only go with ethernet because most mobile devices like smartphones tablets netbooks and portable gaming are Wi-Fi that is why most setups of LAN include additional Wi-Fi connectivity after all the choice to switch to Ethernet depends to a person's needs preferences and of course budget for those houses that use the internet for HD streaming dual band Wi-Fi router is needed however 
if there is a need to maintain the spot on a leaderboard for online games or run a business where online stability and profit go together, then Wi-Fi has not killed the wired yet. We now go to address resolution protocol. Now, most of the computer or programs or applications use logical address or IP address to send receive messages. However, the actual communication happens over the physical address or what we know as the MAC address. From uh, This is from the layer 2 of the OSI model. The goal is to get the destination MAC address which helps in communicating with other devices. This is where ARP or again address resolution protocol comes into the picture. Its functionality is to translate IP address to physical address. The term address resolution refers to the process of finding an address of a computer in a network. The address is resolved using protocol in which a piece of information is sent by a client. Process executing on the local computer to a server process executing on a remote computer. The information received by the server allows the server to uniquely identify the network system for which the address was required and therefore to provide the required address. The address resolution procedure is completed when the client receives a response from the server containing the required address. And that concludes this topic. Thanks for watching.